Some days are really good days, and other days you have to heal a coil. <laughs> oh man. So I went to pull out the rockers for this, and when I went to loosen them, they wouldn't loosen in order to get the push rods out to do the intake manifold. So long story short, I go crack, and they come out really slow. They're just dragging. I get them out barely enough to where that they'll clear. And then when I go to tighten them up, they just spin. They don't bind down. So what happened was I got a whole bunch of threads that came out with it. Something to the effect of that. That's the threads out of the uh, aluminum cylinder head. Had that happen on three different bolts. So I'm stuck. You know, I already put in the Permatex right stuff to seal up where I seal up along the bottom. So I had to put the top on. But then once you go to do a helicoil, how in the world? They got a cool handle, by the way. You know, it goes on to the end of the tap. It's square to fit it. But the problem is, is that you don't have room to do it. I got a bracket here. I got a pipe here. I've got the intake manifold, and I have to tear that off again. So rather than to do that, what I chose to do is to take a 3 8 inch uh, six point socket. Six six points actually have a purpose. Let's get more to that. In a As I was saying. Uh, what I did is I took a 3 8 inch socket and then I took the tap itself you can see what I did with the paper towel to hold it together but I took the tap itself and I just cut off the corners of it on two sides I checked it out to see if it, which socket was the closest to fit and it wouldn't fit in because the corners were like a millimeter on each side a little bit uh, too big so I just turned them on the bench grinder hello bench grinder and got them so that they're skinnied down a little bit. This way I can get a straight clean shot. Plus, I don't like hand cranking these things because as you hand crank it, you run into the risk of leaning on it or making something not quite right. When you do it with an extension, that gives you more visual aid for uh, like, remember in physics when you learn about a line, if you could have a ray or a laser or a line that's straight, you know, like the longer it is, the easier it is to aim. It's like a rifle versus a pistol. So here's my rifle. So anyway, I did that. Um, so maybe somebody's wondering, how do you heal a coil? Do a video on that. Well, I'm going to piggyback that into one. When you get the kit for a heal coil or fix a thread, thread, thread repair system as I'm doing, um, basically you want to go through and it'll tell you what kind of drill bit that you're supposed to have. This one's an M8 by 1.25. So it says for the drill that you need to use a 21 30 second or something like that. Don't hold me to that. Just go by the kit. So anyway, you drill it out first. And what I do is I'll take a paper towel, I'll get a square, and then I'll cut down the middle to the center of the square and then lay it in there. You want to get all of the oil out of there because you need compressed air to blow the rest of it out. When I do the compressed air, you got to block the top part so that it only goes down and out so it doesn't get up into the oil journals and stuff. But uh, you drill the hole, get it real nice and straight, and use a lot of oil. I use a little cap with uh, just 5W30 in it, and that makes it so that it causes all, most of the filings will stick to your drill bit. They'll hold in the little channels and uh, come out to make it easier to clean. Then when you go to tap, dip your tap into that. Let's see. You dip your tap into the oil and again it makes it stick but not as good as you'd like but it does lubricate. And then uh, like I say a lot of the material will stay on the tap. See how those are full of filings? And then what I do is I clean all this crap out of there and then normally what you do is you just stick your helicoil or fix a thread in there using the tool. See look at those beautiful threads. Those threads are winning threads, I declare. So you take your little uh, helicoil pieces and they've got a little thing at the bottom of it and you just uh, put them in there using your helicoil tool which has a little slot that corresponds to that. So you'll take this, get that little uh, thing to fit in there, and see how it's got a little bit of a cut mark on it at the end? Yes, no, can you see it? Nod your head if you can see it. So anyway, that's supposed to break off at the bottom. 
So when you go to thread this in there, you put it up to it, assuming it's all cleaned out. And what I do is I like to put a little bit of thread locker. I'll put at least blue, if not red, on the helicoil outer part and uh, helicoil it. You want it to stick in there. You don't want it to come out with your bolt. That's frustrating. So anyway, that's how you do it. Um, you can buy a set of sockets like this. I saw them in one of my tool magazines. A buddy of mine actually invented them but uh, they fit all the different taps, but you can also do this and just get her done today and not have to order it, because you don't order them ahead of time. Who does that? You wait till you need it, right? It's the American way. So, I think I've covered pretty much everything. Make sure that when you clean up all of the stuff out of there that you use brake parts cleaner so that your oil from tapping it and everything doesn't affect the Loctite. And I think that's everything what I want to say or that I want to say. I have such amazing English skills if I would only use them. I actually got A's all the way through school and my mother corrected me constantly. That's how I got A's. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Um, you can click down arrow, add two favorites or thumbs up. Apparently thumbs up helps according to Ray William Johnson and all them big wigs on YouTube that do it for a living. Uh, the thumbs up is a good thing. It helps other people to find it. And then they can be helped the way that you are helped. And the whole help circle goes around creating a euphoria of good karma. So, cheers. Say I got interrupted and I already have to edit. So, <laughs> I'm going to just add on one more tag here. Now, earlier I said you thread these in into the end and then snap the little thing off of the end. Well, in actuality, I had a little bird tell me the best thing to do, um, you put your Loctite on, you get it in, you get it half turned past the bottom of the threads, and then you see that little, you know, like the crossbar of the G. What you do is you take, and incidentally, you're supposed to have this be right up against the thing to have the, the tang that we're about to break off in the middle here. But I can't do that because these are recessed because on the rocker arms they've got that little journaling to where it has to be below that. But anyway, back to what we're talking about. You have the little tang in there with this. You pull this out, you turn it 90 degrees, and then you whack it. See, that one's been whacked. This one's been whacked. So you take this tool, it would be this way, turn it that way. Uh, just take like the back of your ratchet or something. You don't need anything real big. You just give it a little crack and then see how it's gone. It's down in the bottom now. Now also, these bolts, uh, traditionally they'll have a little uh, unthreaded portion that sticks down a little ways. I've got a tang in the bottom of these holes now. I don't want to go in and have it not tightened down properly. I don't want it to bind on that. So I put those on the bench grinder and I ground them down to where it'll tolerate having that set in the bottom of there. Um, I could pull them out, maybe, maybe not. I could try with a magnet, but they're still hanging on a little bit. Where's that? magnet tool. Oh, there you are. I can't fit a magnet down the hole to get it, so I'm just going to leave them in there. Uh, but that's how you do it. Don't twist off the tang with this. Uh, turn this 90 degrees so that you're on it sideways and just give it a little crack with your ratchet handle and you'll be good to go. So now when you look at these, uh, I've got threads again. It used to be they just, you know, you could push them in and out. Now they're in there nice and strong and happy and be able to go forward with this repair without having to replace the cylinder head too. Man, what a pain in the butt. I don't know if these were electrolysized or what, but like I say, when I went to pull the bolts out, they just wouldn't come, wouldn't come, and then just... <laughs> maybe they were cross-thread in there. The valve cover gasket on this side was gray. The one on the back side was blue. Somebody had been in here before. And when you look at, let me get a flashlight. Whoever worked on this car before just didn't see enough of my videos or something. But you see all the JB Weld on the bell housing there where they cracked it open or something happened there. I don't know. But this thing's been worked on in a less than automotive service excellent fashion. So anyway, I think that's all I have to say. <laughs> And uh, I was worried about the Loctite going in through both sides of the threads on these and Loctiting the bolt in too, which I don't necessarily want. And it stayed on the outside just fine. When I put each of these in, you look inside there, you don't see any blue on them. You see blue because I got the 
black light going but you don't see any blue on that and I threaded in uh, this bolt and there's no blue Loctite on it either so I think I got a home run on that idea yeah solid and clean like anything rock and roll and you don't see any shavings of anything anywhere in there either that's because I'm clean like that